General McPeak started his fast-paced journey across Europe in Aviano, Italy. F-15 fighters from Bitburg Air Base, Germany, are temporarily stationed there to fly air combat patrols over Bosnia. He met people from that unit and the 603rd Air Control Squadron, as well as the host units at Aviano. So I think you say you be your one. From there, he flew on a humanitarian airlift mission into Bosnia. He spent almost an hour on the ground in Sarajevo, meeting with UN Protection Force commanders and seeing some of the damage in a city under siege. Afterward, he left no doubt about his impressions of the job the Air Force is doing to help that troubled country. This is a uh, technically uh, awesome uh, feat, and uh, we made it look easy. Uh, that's the Air Force style. I'm proud of that style. We don't go around waving our arms and yelling about how good we are, but we are damn good. General McPeak then went to Vicenza Air Base, Italy, where he met with leaders from the 5th Allied Tactical Air Forces that coordinate Operation Deny Flight. That night, he was at Rhine Main Air Base, Germany, where he flew with the 37th Airlift Squadron on an airdrop mission over Bosnia. The last stop on the General's European trip was RAF Upper Hayford in the United Kingdom, where he presented the 20th EMS Squadron a flak saying they have the best munitions accountable system in the Air Force. Sergeant Buddy Vickers, Air Force News. <laughs> Air Force crews began flying the 141 in the mid-60s. This long-range transport has flown all over the world carrying troops and cargo where they're needed. The size of the original design was stretched several years ago to increase cargo space. Today, the airframes are starting to wear out. We have put a lot of flying hours on the C-141, and much of it has been in low al altitude environment, which is uh, stressing for the uh, airframe structure and so forth. They're getting pretty well beat up. The 141 fleet has been a valuable asset for all the services. With in-flight refueling, the plane can fly anywhere in the world. It was used during the Vietnam conflict and carried thousands of tons of cargo to Southwest Asia during Desert Shield and Storm. However, to keep them in the air, it's going to cost money. You're probably going to have to do some major modifications of it. We're all already beginning to retire the older ones. General McPeak thinks the new and controversial C-17 will be a good replacement for the aging 141. However, the 141s will still fly until an adequate number of the new planes can be built. Sergeant Buddy Vickers, Air Force News, Rhineline Air Base, Germany. Many people agree the Air Force seems to have more operational missions today than ever before. While the operational tempo remains high, the number of people in the Air Force is dropping to an all-time low, but the job is being done. General McPeak uses the Bosnian airdrop missions as an example. To drop uh, from really quite high altitude in, in terms of the traditional way we've employed uh, airdrop operations before into rather small drop zones at night in formation. This is a uh, technically awesome feat. The general says that Air Force productivity has increased. That means more can be accomplished with fewer people, and that saves money. Uh, if you go back to 1948, I don't know how many airplanes and how many air crews that would have taken, and probably couldn't have done the job. I mean, we couldn't have hit the drop zone in 1948. He doesn't deny that this can be wearing on the people. However, he doesn't believe Air Force resources are stretched to the limit. I think it would be a mistake to underestimate our capacity for doing this kind of thing. I believe we can do it forever and that we could uh, increase the operations tempo if need be. The general says he's proud of the C-130 crews who are flying many of the humanitarian missions. In fact, he's declared this the year of the C-130 to recognize their efforts. Sergeant Buddy Vickers, Air Force News, Rhine-Main Air Base, Germany. <laughs> 